hi everybody not sure if you had the same frustrations i had with uh, using tileable textures the difficulty is that when you're trying to put things together i would work in sketchup create the layout uh, put the tileable texture in, bring it in but if i size the actual object inside unreal then all the textures again started stretching and so forth and I needed a way to actually get around that. I found a brilliant alternative option for all things uh, tileable, you know, from floor tiles to bricks, where there ever there's a repeat of things, there is a brilliant system that I've uh, found out. And then I'd like to share that with you. So let's get going. I am going to create a folder and just call that tiles. Let's see if I am going to find a texture folder and possibly use, let me see whether I should use, oh, let me use bricks. Although I've called it tiles, let me just pull in the bricks folder. To create a material from this texture, you can right click on it and say create material. Then I'm going to drop a cube in here. Just a, a quick hint there, if you want this cube to fall onto the ground, you press end. And also if you want to change the handles when you're editing, you can just click on the object and press the space bar. You will go through sizing, moving and rotating tools, uh, which is quite helpful. So here is the dilemma. I'm going to press F to focus on the area. So when you drop this texture onto the area. That looks great and you could be quite happy with it. But then what happens if you need to resize the object for some reason? Now what would happen is if I resized it, I would have to go into the back end and edit the material to try and get the texture UV things sorted out because the sizings would all go out of uh, sync. Let me show you what I mean. If I size this object, see what happens? It's starting to stretch and, and uncontrollably and it's not how I actually want it to be. When you're talking about bricks, uh, they stay the same size no matter how big the wall goes. So how do you get around this? I'm going to just create another cube. Let's put it in there. The way to overcome that is to use what we call world aligned textures. Okay, I'm going to create another duplicate of this material so I can just work on that and open this up. It's uh, quite a simple process once you know how it works. So I'm going to disconnect this connector. You have to change the texture sample here into just a texture object. So you right click and say convert to texture object. That is the first step that you do. Second step is to you can right click and search for world, align, oops, and you'll have some options. The one you've got to go for is world align texture. Okay, now it's got a lot of inputs and so forth but don't get intimidated by it i'll explain quickly what it means what we need is a input that's able to give us uh, a parameters that we can change three parameters because what we're going to do is we need an input on texture size which requires three inputs there might be some other options you can use but i'm going to use the one that is used to actually create colors so um the shortcut key for creating a, a, a three input or four input parameter is V, keep V down and left mouse button. This thing tends to just run away with a V while you're keeping it down. So I'm just calling this size. And that's basically what the structure is all about. That's all we are looking at to create this marvelous uh, seamless tiles. So how do we connect it up? The texture object will go into the area that says texture object. 
the size we will use the the top size which is the combination of all the three colors now remember although this is rgb we are just using them as placeholders for our x y and z coordinates so we'll take that input and we will input it into texture size so when we make the alteration through this this parameter uh, it will send through one, two, three signals going through to that area and it will be interpreted on this side in the world aligned textures as X, Y and Z. Although when we enter we'll be seeing RGB here. On the output we've got to take the X, Y, Z textures and put it into base color. Okay, so that's how it is and that's how simple it is. Nothing more complicated than that. Just to mention that if you had a normal map that you wanted to include you'd create another texture object bring in the normal map convert it to a texture object create another world aligned texture connect them in the same way and then output it to a normal okay i'm going to just duplicate these two just to show you if this was a normal how we do it control c control v and put it down here, move that a bit out of the way. Whoops, what is going on there? I think I I went right into one of these things. Uh, that's very interesting. I went into the world, let's not change that, I went into the world align um, actual blueprint there. But what I wanted to show you is that we want this texture object would now be the normal over here. We want that to actually be edited in sync with the actual texture if that was a normal. So we don't have normal, I'm just showing you in case you do have it. Same thing will apply, we'll take it out there and put it into the normal. So how would we get both of these coordinated to change when we change this? Is to take an output there and put it right in over here. So hopefully you can see the logic in it that we're using this size parameters to control the texture size of both that texture and this would be the normal. But we don't have a normal so I'm going to just remove this here now. Press delete. Okay, so we back to where we were there now. So if you don't have normals, then pretty much you can be happy with this particular setup. To start off with, we need to just make these parameters they set on 0, 0, 0. We're going to click there. And sometimes you don't see it. It might be toggled up the default value. You click it down. And we can choose maybe say 200 by 200 by 200. All that is doing is it's giving us this texture object to be 200 wide by 200 high by 200 deep so it just keeps the proportion going for us we can we'll alter that in the instance of this material that we're going to create let's save that if you're not familiar with what an instance is you can look at some of the other videos that is explained quite well there so we're going to close this so this is the material now that we've altered and I'm going to right click and create a material instance. I'm going to drag the instance on here and just let me move this object this way. Okay. We've got this a bit big here, so I'm going to go into this area and click on the size and let me just take it down to say 100, 100, 100. And save that and just close that just so we have a good reference. Okay, that looks much better the actual size of the texture so you can fiddle with that there but there's lots more to edit so let's look at the major difference when I showed you this block and I showed you when we increase the size it stretched the texture look what happens when we do it on this one that we've now created can you see the texture stays exactly proportionate no matter how you size the block it stays proportionate in whichever direction because it's it's using a certain type of world coordinate projection onto this area the big plus here is also if you create a, a another copy of this 
and I'm going to just move this back. Can you see where it joins up there? It's a seamless joint on there. It's all got to do with how it's perceived in the entire system, how that's uh, uh, aligned. If I move this up here now, you can see that it's it's basically like in 3D programs when you're using frontal projection of a texture. This technically is how it's particularly working. And you don't have, if I move it to the back, you don't have this strange overlap. Let me show you if I have to create it on, on this particular one. If I go and I create a second model, you see where the overlap, there's this jittery thing because there's two UV maps that is basically competing. So it's a UV map there and a UV map there. In this case, the second that you're creating, the objects seem to, I think in the back end, they stay separate and it's just the, the actual texture, tile textures is projected onto the surface, which makes it brilliant. If you're using a, a brick wall, a floor, anything that's tile just works brilliantly with the system and it's totally seamless and fits in so beautifully. And if you want to alter anything in this area, you, you can open up the, the instance. And we've selected it there. Like I said, you could actually go in. And if you change this to 300, you can see the one surface here changes. Uh, maybe I should go into, let's see if I can go into the full screen mode here. There we go. That will be better. Let's move that. So if I go into this and I say this is 200, um, you're not seeing much because it's on the other surface. If I go into 250 and this, now you can see the bricks are quite long. If I go to 200, I can change this to 250. The bricks become much bigger, etc. So if I go 100 and 100, the bricks are now back to a nice size. But here is the other brilliance also, is because we are working with RGB, which is equivalent to the XYZ, I can actually click the color palette, and when I move this around, that's what's happening with the actual textures. And you can see it's typically like the, the frontal projection of UV maps in 3D programs. But in this case here, it is so much more flexible. So when we rotate around here, when I move up, you can see I can size it differently all and give beautiful visual feedback. So for anything that is kind of brick related or tile related, anything that's tiled, this is a brilliant way to, to get around with um, uh, texturing the objects inside of Unreal. Like I mentioned in previous video, I don't know if I mentioned in this one that when I wanted to make the alteration, I had to take it to SketchUp, do the UVs there, bring it back in, because the UVs were a bit too, uh, too sort of stressful to work with in Unreal. It, it's, you had to go into the material, check the UV, bring it out, create an instance, and try and manipulate it. This way, you, you basically, it's just kind of plug and play. It works so brilliantly. Uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna just go back to say 128, 128, 128 and that's now resizing the textures and you can see seamless beautiful movement with it I'm creating a second one moving it up and you can see uh, where it where it joins it's seamless it's mainly because of how the projection is happening okay and that's pretty much what I need when I'm doing my my modeling in this um, how it will bake uh, maybe we should just check that out if I have to do a bake and see what what the options are go F11 to get the size back and then just click a uh, full build let's see what goes for what I'm sure because the program sets up the textures and uses the world align coordinates it would read it as that and wouldn't have a problem with uh, you know light maps and that sort of thing but for my purpose, I actually make the the lights all, I choose them to be mobile. And because of that, I work in this kind of space. I don't create light maps often. I'll do a build once or twice, but then keep the visuals as I'm working in here now. So I'll just pause this until, oh, there, there we go. Looks like it's getting through it. Um, and we can see where there's any artifacts and yeah. So it's building, compiling, exporting lighting data. 
yeah, it's pretty much still very clean. Okay, it's going down a long rabbit hole here to finish all this stuff. So there we go, beautiful still. Lovely. So hopefully this has been of value to you. I think all your brick walls and your tiled floors will just take on a whole different meaning now with the system and you won't be sitting with this the setup of jittery over here. Okay, so let, if we go through it just once more, if we look into the back end, basically it's taking your, your normal texture that you have in, right-clicking, converting it to a texture object. Then right-clicking and typing in world align texture, bringing it in, then creating a, per, uh, a parameter uh, editor by clicking V, or you could go three, click left mouse and then right click and change it to a, a like if you go three, click, right click and you can say convert to a parameter, it will change into the same thing and link it into that area and pretty much that's on your way. So this is the simple layout to get all your tiled effects working well. Of course, if you're having tiled effects that has got a lot of other features like you know, in including not only the normals, but if you have ambient occlusion, all that, it would become a bit more complicated. But most of them you'd be able to get away with doing a setup like this. Okay, so hopefully that will help you with your modeling and your texturing. And um, yeah, share it with other people if you find it valuable. And have a fantastic day and God bless.